Hi everyone, I hope you're well. It is November 2021 and therefore it is time to start thinking festive. One of the festive things that we do or a lot of us do is get into some champagne or Bucks Fizz or Prosecco or whatever. And so I have decided to do a champagne flute. Now the subject is Christmas trees. As in not the Christmas trees that are decorated in your house, but the ones outside that have got snow on it. Not in every country, but <laughs> in a lot of countries. So these trees, the, I hold, the whole idea is courtesy of Marika, because Marika, uh, one of my patrons, wanted to know how to successfully engrave a snowy Christmas tree. So that is why we are doing this today. You will see that I very roughly sketched on and I've included a little star. I mean, you can put an owl flying by, you can leave it completely blank, you can do whatever you like. Um, but I just thought uh, a star in the background there would be quite nice. Um, I haven't slap banged it right between two trees. I've put it sort of nearer the one tree uh, just for something different. Now, you will notice I have got some marks on this glass. There's a blue one um, on every third. Well, it's getting a little bit faded in places because I've rubbed it off. Um, and what I did for that is use my circles chart, which is this. And as patrons, if you have a look under, if you search for circles, you will see a printable version, well, a, a JPEG of this um, A4 sheet. And just print it out is the most useful Honestly, it's so useful when you are wanting to put um, sort of equidistant objects around your glass, whether it's two, three, five, six, whatever. Um, obviously, for something like this, I have chosen an odd number because I don't want two trees slap bang in front of the other. Um, I want them to never be able to be um, in front of the other exactly. So being three, it's an odd number, they will always look um, separated, which is really good fun. So all I did obviously with this piece of paper flat, I stuck the glass so that it is centered on one of the circles, it's obviously nearest to the size. Okay, so the red markings on this sheet, it might be different on the one I've put on Patreon, I'm not really sure, but basically here, I have just marked the blue line on the glass where the red um, marker is and that equally gives me three nice points. Okay, what else is on here? I'm putting my glasses on so I can see what's going on. There is also another mark on here and that is the green mark which is now a bit uh, faded, a <laughs> bit of a mess but Basically, that was uh, uh, using the Polaroid film, I detected that there was a vague stress line there. Now, not everyone has Polaroid film, not everyone knows what a stress line is, but I would say, um, I think I have mentioned it before, and I might do another full video about that at some point, but basically, put that into search, see what you can find. Um, I, I have mentioned it somewhere before. And if you haven't got Polaroid film and you don't know the glass, this, because it's got a fine rim, and that means that it has been sorted out uh, by the manufacturer and anneal very, annealed um, should be slowly, but sometimes they do it too quickly and the molecules don't knit and therefore you get a stress line that is not visible with the naked eye. And uh, so, it is that in this case and I just am um, staying as much as possible below that line so basically that's what you need to do if you don't know the glass and if it hasn't got a lumpy bit like this is a cheap cheap wine glass you can see it's got that lumpy bit on the top that means that it hasn't um, had the top sorted out and made nice and smooth and so that is not going to have a stress line 
uh, around it. But because it's a smooth, um, and I hadn't used this before, I was suspicious, suspicious and sure enough. So you guys, if you haven't got um, the means of detecting a stress line, just stay a good centimeter and a half below the rim because quite often that is roughly where it's going to be. Sometimes it's further down but not that often. It's usually near the top because that's where the heat is and that's how, how where the heat comes down um, when they are making a nice smooth rim. Okay, what else can I tell you? Um, I would have um, roughly level, put a line around here to give me a base going all the way around. That is the same. Um, that's going to be snowy so it doesn't really matter that much but if you um, put a pile of books and a pen on top that's fine but this is the most basic way of doing that um, get yourself a base put an upright on it then you can just hold your hold your pen against it and then you've got your your glass sitting there and then just turn your glass against the pen I have got a fantastic big heavy duty proper workshop one that that was nearly a hundred pounds does the same job but slightly more efficient but that old piece of wood honestly I used for years and years and years perfect right so that's one, one way of doing that um, now what else can I tell you about this glass I think that's just about it um, keeping these really simple these trees um, I know what I wanted to show you. I was going to show you where I got the ideas from. I mean, obviously, a Christmas tree shape, very basic. Uh, you can draw it with the eyes closed. But grabbing some basic images off the internet, one's an actual photograph, and these two are just um, sketches, and um, they are copyright free, these two. That one, who knows, but I'm, honestly, I am not even remotely getting it exactly like the tree. I am just getting the whole shape idea. And so, you know, if, even if you look up uh, colouring in um, images, that sort of thing, you're going to get a, a rough idea of the shapes. And, um, of course, I made sure that they are roughly the same sort of size, and then I could just sketch around. Um, we are keeping this really simple, of course. The star I didn't mention. Um, I used a set square holding it upright um, to get the perfect line um, going straight up. Don't guess it. You might, you might end up with your star giving it the huh. uh, <laughs> on the huh, as they say in Suffolk here. Uh, right, so I straight up and down line is quite important and then um, the crossways line I used that same upright piece of wood to make sure that they are horizontal. Now this I thought to myself mm, it's going to look funny if I keep it the same level as the tree or below the top of the tree because of that stress line. So I have taken this top through the stress line Hmm, <laughs> taking a chance. You're always taking a chance if you go over the stress line. It may do nothing, especially if it's not a very strong stress line. And going straight up like that, it's, it's not likely to upset it. Um, but probably advisable not to go above the stress line. I will be going very lightly. It's not going to be deep. Where it would get upset is if I did that horizontal line on the stress line. And if you haven't seen uh, the result of a stress line um, nightmare before, here is a very dusty, let me give it a, a wipe, <laughs> very dusty old glass. It had a lovely green man on it. Oops, no, that's not going to show you. Um, I had done my green man and you've probably seen this before but that used to be on the top and there was a stress line really strong one actually and I managed to upset it I didn't even try and detect it and I should have 
anyway so I have always kept this as a, a lovely memento to show my students I literally when I left and went home it was fine when I came back the next day that was completely off so uh, I don't mean to frighten the living daylights out of you <laughs> sorry <laughs> you'll be fine you'll be fine stay below the rim um, and if you really want to go for a, a safe glass <laughs> go for a cheapy one um, actual actual fact this this glass is is really chunky and I think I did one of my doodle um, uh, videos using this glass I have a feeling I did and it's it's quite thick actually it's not bad at all uh, engraved up pretty well and uh, anyway so that's that right I have waffled on far too long and I'm sure you're dying to get your teeth into this so let's get to it right I have decided to show you anyway again because um, I have demonstrated once before if you search and on, on the Patreon channel and I think it's under bees and or daisies and bee or something like that anyway this little glass is uh, same as the one I showed you that actually uh, came off at the rim same sort of thing really old uh, but it's such a lovely glass anyway um, it has got a dreadful stress line so I am going to now show you with these two little pieces of Polaroid film and I'm going to hold them in my fingers like that you won't be able to see it clearly just now um, so I'm going to show you here one there and one there so they are like that basically when I put them uh, in the light I will be putting them either side of the back rim like that okay now I'm going to point this to the light the poor old camera is going to completely freak out two pieces of Polaroid film okay you can see how they change so the light is behind I've turned the one until it's dark and I'm going to slip this back piece between and look at that beauty oh my gosh I have to say it's only about looks like about not even a centimeter from the rim so it's very high up I'm not seeing any more further down no it's right at the top so this glass actually can be engraved quite happily um, well underneath that that's fine but you can see how strong and it goes all the way around I'm turning the glass uh, whoops it is one of the worst stress lines I've ever seen incredible so there you have it that is your stress line detection mask on and headband magnifiers and of course my glasses and all set to go you can hear the dust extractor in the background clearly not everyone has a dust extractor but as long as you are masked up that should be all right I have a little green stone here it's quite an old one it was a bit bigger uh, of course you can get much smaller ones you can use a white Arkansas you can use whatever you want even a diamond if you really want to uh, I like to use a lighter stone it's a half tone and I am going uh, with a slow speed um, probably about only about 20,000 rpm and um, basically running over all the basic shapes of the snowy tops of the branches clearly I am not sticking to my drawing exactly obviously it is a very rough sketch and as I'm going along I might decide to add or take away or change the shape of any of these little um, branches this is just the heavy snow that's on the top, obviously. <laughs> I must admit, my plan, as I mentioned earlier, was to keep this as a very, very simple engraving. 
And of course, as I went along, I wanted to add more and more. And by the time I finished this glass, I had uh, created something a little bit more than very basic. But it, it's not it's not difficult to follow the whole the whole procedure and get all the different effects that I got in the end. I had a great deal of fun doing this glass, I have to say. So with the three fir trees done, I decided I must practice this little star. And I didn't show you all my practices, obviously. As you can see some already um, on the glass. I tried, uh, first of all, with a white Arkansas just to see if I can do a half tone background and then brighten it up. And then I didn't like that. And then I've got here yeah, a tiny diamond and um, I'm just practicing a little bit and definitely the most important thing I uh, decided to do was <laughs> having said that pull it towards me and then I flicked one away there but pulling it towards you it gives you the most control I feel to get those straight lines and I keep flicking this away but I kept saying to myself when you do this proper Make sure you just pull it towards you, pull it towards you, and you're more likely to be more efficient. So I tried all sorts of things. Um, here I have got a massive abrasive type of rubber, and I wanted to do maybe a half turn, and then I decided, no, I'm going to do a half turn on the inside, so it's got like a hue in the background. And so I was experimenting with this I found it very difficult <laughs> obviously to control it and and make neat shapes I wanted to sort of do a circular shape or a slightly blobby cross shape but whatever I did I, I was really battling with it and of course I was trying to do it in my usual uh, hurry <laughs> I would say I have never practiced one tiny little item as many times as I did with the star and I am including it in this video because I think it's important uh, again to tell you that if you need to practice like you all those other bits and pieces you can see on there are practices and it's really important to pick up a scrappy piece of glass and practice and there I all I did was make sure that I could get my big rubber inside this glass so Holding my breath, keeping my eye on the destination, keeping it flowing as freely as possible um, and not pressing hard and not trying to guide it. Um, sorry about the um, going out of shot. That's a little bit silly. Oh, there we go. <laughs> um, anyway pulling it towards myself very carefully and it skipped over the glass a little bit but it doesn't matter it doesn't matter just just try and get it right I'm going very gently this diamond is is quite sharp it's it's not an old one I wanted to make sure that it grips the glass because I'm not pressing hard at all. As I mentioned earlier, it's, it's quite useful to keep your eye on the destination point rather than following the diamond as it goes along its little journey because you can easily waver. And if you feel like you are going off slightly, I think I went off slightly there, tough I, was, I nearly swore there, but <laughs> tough tacky, just lift up the burr from the glass and just leave it. 
So now I've got a ever so slightly larger burr. I mean, the other one was very, very small. So now I'm just thickening up the, the middle area from the middle outwards. And I'm being so careful not to go off, off line here. Remember, this is a twinkling star. Okay, so um, it's, it's not absolutely essential um, that you get these lines perfectly. It's... I'm trying to tell myself that. <laughs> but, yeah, come on, man. It's a twinkling star. It's already looking pretty great, I think. The whole idea is there. The effect is there. So I'm just thickening up from the middle area outwards, not taking it right to the end, but just sort of most of the way. That one I did go pretty much to the end. Definitely not pressing very hard at all. Also, this glass is quite thin near the top. And as I did mention, of course, that stress line is somewhere near the top there. It's not very strong as stress lines go, but I don't want to upset it. And so I'm just being very gentle. I think it's only the top spike that would actually go over the stress line. So I'm just adding a little rounded bit in the middle there. I do make that little bit a bit bigger, a little bit a bit bigger. Pushing away, which is a little bit precarious. But anyway. You can see the black pen still on this glass. I used a permanent marker to um, mark out the design. So that hangs around for quite a while on this glass. So again, still building up from the middle. Now, holding my breath once again. Caution to the wind, as I say. And just getting in there carefully with my great big rubber, which is quite abrasive. It leaves a hue on the glass that's quite visible. And I'm just trying to give it the sort of interesting 3D uh, glow, if you like, from the back. This really is not going to affect your, your bubbly drink that's inside. <laughs> um, but it just adds a little something. You can see I'm trying to get a sort of slightly cross, you know, a blobby cross effect. My screen's not that big um, on my editing panel. I can just about see it. You can see it in the background. If I was finding it a little bit offset, bearing in mind once again I have got the 
you know, the glass facing the camera, which is now above me. And of course, I am to the side and front, and therefore I'm getting a different view of the glass. And so um, when I looked at it, the, um, the effect that I was creating was a little bit offset still, and I was just adding it, extending it a little bit more. I like that effect. I really do. Um, yeah. So here I have got a slightly bigger diamond and I'm just making that circle slightly larger. Back with my experimental glass and I decided to use the soft rubber. Flatten the top a little bit. You can use the back of a, a diamond or stone uh, to do this as well. And all I wanted to do is soften that glow on the edge of the glow. So you couldn't see a hard line. It's just a slow um, descending, ascending glow to the middle. Imagine using this effect uh, when engraving a glass that's full of planets and stars and moon and all the rest of it. If you want a, a glass that features that sort of thing, it would be quite nice to put this rubber effect underneath. Now, I wasn't happy with that little extension, so I've taken my tiny diamond and I'm just fixing it. Or trying to. You've got to be so careful when you're fixing these sort of things because you can make it worse. But I, there is a um, slight discrepancy. It wasn't going straight and I tried to just straighten it a bit. And again, it doesn't matter. It's a, a twinkling star. It doesn't matter that much. It looks fine. So here we go. This is quite a large diamond, the sort of size that most of you will have. And so um, I decided to use this initially. Um, I'm using it dry, as you can see. I, I do prefer that just, just for today, um, not for just for today, just for some glasses. It's funny how just sometimes that's what I want to do. Um, I am not engraving deep. This is not intaglio engraving. It's surface engraving. And therefore, um, with a nice, sharp, newish diamond um, that really cuts into the glass easily, um, it's got a really bright effect. I thought I would work dry. If this was a thick glass and I was carving quite deep, then I would most definitely use water. Not that that's absolutely essential, but I would. Um, obviously, this is making a huge amount of dust. I've got my dust extractor on, and that is sucking it um, effectively straight up. So I I'm having to deal with much less dust. Of course, as you know, I've got my, my mask and everything on. Um, certainly, you really, really do need to have your mask on. And if you don't have an extractor, you may want to put um, a fan on. Certainly, if it's, if it's hot where you are, put a fan on to blow the dust in a different direction. You know if you put the fan to the side of the glass then it'll blow it to the other side and not it won't come anywhere near you it'll just go in the rest of your workshop and of course not in the direction of your mask anyway uh, these circular movements are not creating a woolly effect because I'm not uh, pressing that hard and so what I am trying to create is a relatively smoothish area, and if there is some movement, it's not that serious, but it's not a woolly effect, if you know what I mean. Um, underneath this snow is a branch, and the branch is full of 
sort of spiky leafy bits and you don't know how um, the how deep the snow, the snow is in that area or in all the different areas. I mean, there are billions and billions of, <laughs> of scenarios, so it doesn't matter. Um, you're just getting the effect of an overall coverage of the snow on top of the branches. I looked at lots of different pictures and... Um, Gosh, they, <laughs> you can you can go to town, really, honestly. Um, so obviously, this is sped up to a whopping great two hundred percent of normal speed. And there are times where even at this stage I might change the shape of the branch if I feel like it. So that is uh, the first tree completed, the basic shape that is, the basic forms. It already looks quite effective. And now I'm going to give you a slightly different option if you happen to have a very large diamond burr available. Then you can outline first with a this sort of size or even smaller if you like um, after which you can use your biggest diamond available to very rapidly fill in the middle bits it's an efficient thing to do using the largest possible stone or diamond within an area uh, it's just efficient Unless you want lots of tiny bits of texture or something, for example. But here you can see I've got a nice big diamond. Which I and it's actually quite rough, to be honest. It's it's quite a new one, so it's really rough and ready. And it's just gonna chew straight into the glass, producing tons of dust. which is mainly going into the dust extractor. Again, as I say, these um, the movement that I'm using is not creating much of a, a woolly effect it's not supposed to but um, it doesn't need to be as smooth as a baby's bum but of course there will be parts on this lush soft snow that it will be as smooth as a baby's bum so um, as I say there are endless endless possibilities this is just an efficient, quicker way. Obviously not the speed. This is actually 200 times. 200 times? 200 percent. 200 percent of natural speed. Looking 
Rather good, I think. So now I'm going to roughly sketch in a line for the level of snow on the ground. And it was really funny because I'm thinking to myself, do I keep this just one simple, single, thin line just for that effect? Oh no, she thinks. <laughs> oh boy. Anyway, right. I have in my drill a white Arkansas and the next thing to do is create half tones underneath the branches. Well, underneath that blob of snow. And I can tell you my drill was going at a about between 10 and 17,000 RPM. Really rather slow. And quite frankly, I think there were times it was going less than that. When you know, <laughs> I didn't have it set on a, a specific speed. My foot, obviously, as anyone's foot, um, <laughs> you sort of sometimes the foot comes off the pedal and, and you suddenly realize that you're not going as fast as you should. I did have a maximum speed set on my drill and that was of 20,000 RPM. But I didn't go up to anywhere near that. Not with this white Arkansas. You start to burn the glass if you do that. You can see already it is producing an ever so slightly 3D effect on these blobs of snow. I'm only uh, doing the, the half tone at the bottom of each blob at the moment. And up the sides a little bit. And if I happen to see a chippy bit, which I have to say there, there were only one or two, if I happen to see one, then I fix it. Now, here I have um, a jolly great um, black rubber. Now, I have to tell you, I bought this off Amazon. I will add the link below because... I saw it and I decided to try it. So I sent off for this set of rubbers and I am very impressed. Now, they are just made in China and I don't mean just made in China, obviously so many things are, but sometimes you can be a little bit worried that it is because it's very, very cheap, that it is an inferior product. Um, it's so hard to tell, but at the moment, I am really impressed. I worry mainly about the strength of the mandrel. Now, this may look like it's going fast. The, the speed of my film is right up, uh, probably at about 150, I think. That's 150% of natural speed. and But the actual speed of the drill is not that far. It's probably about 20. Um, I hadn't... I didn't up the speed of the, the... the maximum speed of the drill before I put this in. So I know it's not going that fast. And it's really working quite efficiently. I am impressed with this rubber it is a hard black rubber and I know that my supplier doesn't have them anymore and I have been battling to to find one that I'm happy with and this one I must admit I am pretty happy with 
The set does have a few other rubbers as well. It has a soft grey in it as well, which I I felt was all right. I gave it a little test. Anyway, so now oh, I'm just catching up with what I did uh, off screen. I didn't. I had a really bad shot. Um, I went round my circle with the white Arkansas and then I went around the middle with a larger diamond. I had the, the camera was not um, on the area I was engraving so you couldn't see what I was doing so I thought I'd quickly give you a buzz around that. I'm not overly impressed with the effect that I've made in the middle of the star to be honest. Um, I think it was fine as it was before. Anyway, so now we're going back to my snowy base. We've done all the shading um, of the trees um, as much as I want to do for the moment. And I am doing a very simple, very rough backwards forwards motion with a pretty big diamond. Now you can use uh, uh, a cone, uh, not a cone, a uh, flame shaped diamond, quite large, um, if you want, but uh, I was just using that one. I like a cross hatch effect, and here I've got that new rubber as well, and I'm just running over the areas uh, underneath with a same sort of action, uh, a sort of a one way than the other way, uh, cross hatchy kind of effect. Um, just you can see how this rubber is really nice and abrasive and leaves a fantastic hue on the glass and I am so impressed with it because that is really useful and it it immediately smooths some you know pretty harsh diamond work uh, which means that you can use another rubber, softer rubber, and get that back to, to clear a glass quite easily. Anyway, um, cross-hatching I am quite a fan of, actually, especially when it comes to the ground. And it's just an effect of movement and shading and, um, well, just to catch your eye and so that your eye knows that it is, is rough ground. Um, and in this case, ground and snow. And so, as I say, I was going to stop there. And then I thought, no, 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 let's carry on. Um, and possibly if I was just doing this glass for myself or for a customer, I might sandblast the bottom. But um, as it's you guys, I thought, no, 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 let's not sandblast this. We're going to carry on hand engraving this until I'm happy with the finish. And here I've got uh, my big old abrasive rubber that um, a lot of you have got and which I am still selling at this point. Um, but you can probably find them all over the place. Um I thought this was a good rubber, but I've got to say that that black disc I'm even more impressed with. And so what I'm doing here is just half turning um, the underside of this layer of snow. Um, I mean, I, I could have varied the layers into each other a bit, but I just decided to do continuous, almost rows, <laughs> rows of it. Uh, it doesn't matter. More diamond. I thought to myself, I'll just keep going until I get to the bottom of this glass. Not down the stem, but just the bottom of the bowl of the glass. And then, sorry about the, the camera action. I slightly lost it a bit. Um, I was holding this very loosely and bouncing it over the glass with a sort of forward, backward crosshatch again, and it is producing lovely dotted effects. Now, again, apologies for losing you guys. Um, that's a bit better. And I was getting really excited about this effect. As I'm showing you, I'm just literally let, holding it loosely and letting it bounce over the glass at a very slow speed, I have to say. I think at one point I looked at the 
um, micromotor and it said it was about 7,000 RPM. It's what you call a stipple effect. So then I thought, hmm, I like that. <laughs> so we'll carry on with that effect. And so I decided to add it up. Now, of course, because it's now more the top end of the burr that I'm using, whereas it was because the glass was upside down and the angle of the glass, I was getting the, un, the sort of side of it, uh, which is fresher diamonds. So I wasn't... I'm happy with using the side because the, the diamond's not as fresh because I've been using it dry to do the all the trees. So anyway, here we go. We're just carrying on with the sort of dotty, not quite as dotty, but there is a sort of an interesting effect coming in the darker areas there. As you can imagine, by now, I am playing. <laughs> oh, dear. And now look at the dust on the top of the glass as I'm turning it. Uh, you missed that. But anyway, if you go back, you'll see there's a lot of dust on the top of the glass. And I was keeping my eye on that and thinking, hmm. Okay. So I've decided, of course, with my big diamond to get back to the branches and do some nice, big, fresh, bright, blobby bits of snow. Not really blobby, but sort of brighter areas of snow. Because, of course, I had gone over areas with that dark rubber. And um, in some places a little bit too far down. So I decided just to rough it up a bit. These shapes are so easy, honestly. Really, really easy. And of course, there's all sorts of different types of trees. Don't ask me what kind of trees these are. These are just made up apart from that one, which was actually a photograph, as I say. And I saw it had sort of fingers, you know, hanging down. So I thought, OK, we're going to stick to fingers. Right. So this is where I decided, OK, I like that effect that I had tried earlier. This is a very, very big diamond. And I was trying to run it lightly over the glass and then I decided, okay, I'm going to have to do physical stipples. Again, I am holding it very lightly, running it very slow. And you know when you've got wafty bits of snow coming down that is getting quite big, so there's big bits and little bits, and they're all different shapes. And so, caution to the wind, off I went, doing my little wafty bits of snow coming down. This drill is barely ticking over at this stage, but it is actually turning. <laughs> I'm not doing this without it turning, obviously. And, um, and I'm just dotting uh, and being very careful, in fact, that I, I try and make the areas equal. Yeah, I'm, I'm working quite fast, but actually I think I've sped this bit up. I don't think I'm working quite that fast. Um, but where I go over the tree areas, I like to... I was trying to get um, dots into the darker bit so that you could see the snow falling down in front of the tree. But it's, it's a light, a very light dusting of snow coming down at the moment. Uh, 
And when I got to the top of the glass, I thought, oh my gosh, remember, there is a stress line there. As It's not a very strong one, but there's a stress line. And I start bashing it around with a big diamond dotting it. So I, you can see I'm holding the glass quite hard against the top of my glass holder, especially when I do the top. And, and just tapping, I know it looks aggressive, but I'm actually tapping quite lightly. Just checking that I haven't got any sort of overly blank areas. Not that it's that much of a problem really. So the signature and date. Thanks Marika for your lovely suggestion. I hope you enjoyed that. And thank you everyone for watching and certainly have a go with some lovely snowy fir trees. Bye for now.